Oh, cheat to death one more time. Like a moth to the flame, host and author Chris Dorsey finds himself back in Africa. People often ask me, what's, what's your favorite place to hunt? You know, they know obviously I do a little traveling to do this kind of stuff. Without hesitation, the answer I give them is the Okavango Delta of Botswana. Dorsey has returned again to the camp and concession of professional hunter and outfitter Jeff Wren, the operator of Ran Safaris in Botswana's Okavanga Delta. Dorsey has experienced four of the big five of the dangerous game of Africa. Although one is tempted to say that he's been lucky enough to face these deadly adversaries from lion to leopard, charging elephant, and of course, Cape Buffalo, Dorsey might have another word to describe the alarming encounters. You look around and it's, it's really how people would imagine Eden. It's water in, in a desert, basically, that's created this oasis, and it's full of game. I mean, there's game everywhere. Wherever you look in the Okavango, there is some nearly mythological creature to be seen, as if out of a storybook. The animal Dorsey's in pursuit of, though, is among the most formidable, the Cape Buffalo. So good to, good to be back. Well, you'll kind of leave camp in the mornings, drive to the old, you'll drive on them for a while when they start getting really fresh. You get out of the vehicle and then you'll just track them up on foot. And you could spend a whole day with a herd of buffalo. The sharp senses of the Cape Buffalo make attempts to stalk him a perilous enterprise. Yet, as the professional hunters say, get close, then a hundred yards closer. Most people that come out and uh, smart buffalo can get when you do hunt them, and they'll keep, they'll turn. Once they realize that you will onto them, they'll start turning and they'll always try and head downwind so you got the wind blowing on your back when you're tracking them. As the Yoruba say, when the hunter meets the buffalo, he promises never to hunt again. He will cry out, I only borrowed the gun. I only look after it for my friend. Now I see a horn. It's a buffalo. So you get into the herds, and, and really what you're looking for are, you're going to see pieces of buffalo. I mean, you're going to see a little turn of horn. You're going to see a hoof. You're going to see the tail end sticking out of a bush. You just have to be patient. Don't move. He's looking at us. I don't know what's spooked him, but something's spooked him. It's maddening sometimes because you make the perfect stalk. You don't do anything wrong. Wind swirls, they're gone. But hey, it's buffalo hunting. Get These are just the bulls that hang way back around sort of the edges of the herd. But we will see what we will see. Let's find the herd again. All right. Damn, that is a rush, isn't it? <laughs> and the rush is on to the Okavango Delta of Botswana. This is one of the unique geographical features, not only of Africa, but of the entire world. Think of the Mississippi or the Nile Delta, where great rivers meet the sea. But the 6,000 square mile Okavango builds in the midst of one of the planet's great deserts, the Kalahari, and never finds an outlet to the ocean. This remarkable basin of water is what creates the wildlife paradise in the heart of Southern Africa. Buffalo worry me because of, mostly because of the predator. The buffalo are forever having, there's a bunch of lions lurking around just about every single herd of buffalo. People forget about, they, they'll flick, flick a fly away, and that movement is what immediately a buffalo will pick that up. In the schoolyard, they call it tag. But for Dorsey and Riggs, now that they've contacted the buffalo again, the consequences can be a little bit more severe. Right, man, perfect. Now the wind's right at the moment. Are they just standing? Are they just walking? They're standing there. You've got to have a good set of trackers with you, and it's all teamwork. I haven't seen these. A lot of hand signs, just signals, one little word here, there. They understand what you want them to do. And it's all basically it's teamwork. It's, you've got to have a good team. Hunting Cape Buffalo is all about teamwork.
teamwork, something the legendary professional hunter Harry Selby knows only too well. This, this new book is wonderful, and, and the foreword you wrote for this is fantastic. And I, there's, there's few books that I've ever read in the hunting world that are any more memorable, frankly, than Horn of the Hunter, one of my favorite all-time books. You, know, you were the star of that. Yeah. And it really, to me, that book kind of told what Safari was all about. Well, what do you think of Cape Buffalo? You've written extensively on Cape Buffalo. You've talked about it. Well, to me, they're, they're tough critters, but you've got a lot of experience with them. They, they're great animals to hunt. Yeah. The buffalo is a worthy adversary, a wonderful animal. When someone writes about a buffalo, they have to first start off and say, you know, basically, like Capsic said, you have to take out, the first thing you do is take out your insurance policy. <laughs> <laughs> few men in our lifetimes, hell, few men in anybody's lifetime, have spent more days in the bush at the head of safaris than the incomparable Harry Selby. And now Dorsey's back in the bush in pursuit of one of the big five, the Cape Buffalo. Don't move, don't anybody move. We're out in the open. Don't move, there's a cow looking at us. What we'll do, we'll come back early in the morning, pick up their tracks and track them out again. Uh, we'll also be spooking them a bit. They, they know we're around. There's a lot of buffalo in here. It seems buffalo. like it is. No, as we say, we've never seen the whole herd yet. <laughs> So we don't know how many they are. That's really the signature of a great herd hunt, though, is getting in tight. And you find that you hone your skills. When you're out there hunting buffalo, you become a better hunter. You're forced to become a better hunter because they don't give you any margin for error. And that's, uh, that's fantastic stuff. That's why people keep coming back to Africa to hunt buffalo. And the dichotomy of African hunting is sweltering days on the trail and white tablecloths at night. Jeff Rand is, is kind of, not slowly, but over time built up a reputation as one of the best professional hunters in Africa, one of the best operators in all of Africa. And uh, Jeff has done a great job of that. He and his wife, Kwesi, run a magnificent camp. I mean, I've never seen a finer facility, finer place to go. 19 safaris, this is my favorite safari, this one right here. As Ernest Hemingway said of Africa, it's true at first light. And now another day of Cape Buffalo begins for Dorsey. Got my full professional hunter's license in the 1969 season. It's a special kind of life to be a hunter in Botswana, a professional hunter, or anywhere in Africa for that matter. Whether you work for somebody or not, you're your own boss in many ways because you have to make the decisions out there. There's nobody to say do this or do that. You have to decide, hey, this is the best way to do it at that, that time and moment. And those decisions involve life and death questions about how to deal with threatening animals like five-ton elephants. Boy, that right ivory looks really nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. That one side is broken off a little. Got a big head. He's probably got like 28, 30 in the head. Probably go like 55, 60. I'll tell you what, anywhere in Africa, outside of here, yeah, yeah, outside right of here, now. anywhere else, he would be taken right Look now. Look at that guy. Look at the body size of this guy. Enormous body size on him. Okay, come here a bit closer. Let's back watch him, forward. watch him. Hey! He's in musk. Hey! Hey! Back off. <laughs> back off. Go <Come> on. <laughs> Get him in the morning. Sure enough, we come back in the morning and and uh, you know we busted him twice in the morning. Good stalks again, just getting in there. And we follow him again. We see the dust. They bust out a couple of times. We get closer and closer. Yeah. Go to the far left. What does that muddy bull look like? He's got good hooks. He's got good hooks, but he's not wide. 
We just again settle down. It's getting late in the day at this point, and we've got one more shot at him. And Cecil just looks down like this and says, "Let's give it one more go." So we we gave it one more go. see them kind of spook off but they're just they're walking now they're not running away they're just kind of easing off into the woodlands and uh, sun's going down we sneak up get around get ahead of them they're really the key here is getting ahead of them let them come to you instead of trying to snipe them from the back we get ahead sure enough outsteps the one bull we're looking for He dropped to the shot. Watch him, watch him. Oh, he just flew. I've never had one drop to the shot like that. This one actually dropped right there. He didn't take a single step, which is not usual. You don't usually have that happen. That is a hunt from hell. That was an epic stock, wasn't it? <laughs> My God. Oh, this thing's down. It's gone. I've shot five buffalo now. This is the first one, first one that has ever dropped to the shot. I mean, they just don't do that. I don't know how far we walked today. <laughs> we done that here. Far enough. Just far enough. Here. Thank you, old beast. It was, it was elation, it was relief, it was, you know, my God, we did it. You know, it was just this fantastic experience because it was such an epic day. I mean, it was, it was as good as hunting can get. I mean, it's something that will pull me back here to the Okavango as many times as I can afford it. <laughs>